I'm Jamie S. Rich. I've been working in comics for 20 years. Join me as we dig a little deeper into how comic books are made and get to know the people who make them. This is From the Gutters. So we're here in the, the treasure trove palace of the All Reds, as you can see, surrounded by the, all the artwork from Madman from various different artists. And I'm here with Mike Allred today to talk about Madman and all the other comic books you're, you're working on, which is millions to these days. Uh, so you're just showing me you've been working on FF. What issue are you on right now? Just finishing seven. Lucky number seven. And uh, FF is kind of like a dream project for you, wasn't it? Like oh, absolutely. Yeah. Jack Kirby is my be-all, end-all. My favorite series of all time is it, the, the run that he did on the original with Stan Lee. And um, all of my favorite characters to this day started uh, in Fantastic Four, Silver Surfer, Black Bolt, and then Humans. Medusa was my first comic book crush, so to be able to draw her every month is a big thrill. And in a nightgown, as in one of the recent <laughs> <Yeah>. issues. <laughs> it's, there is actually an element to your work that has always been appealing. It seems like you're chasing after a certain feeling. And my guess is it's kind of like a nostalgic feeling of what comic books and movies and music inspired in you when you were a kid. Uh, is, is that even remotely accurate or? I don't know, nostalgia is a, is a kind of a dangerous word. Um, I'm always trying to um, move forward. I'm, I'm always looking for a progression in my work, but I think also most human beings are trying to find that magical best day from their childhood and make it a permanent thing in their life. And so I kind of tap into that. One of the reasons why com the comic book art form in general is the thing I've largely dedicated my life to is because that's where I have the clearest pathway to maintaining the sense of joy that I had in my childhood and that I work hard to maintain in my regular day life. And so I'm not consciously trying to do anything retro or, or nostalgic. I'm just, it's like finding my happy place. Yeah, because I think the art side of it, particularly, you have been constantly progressive. And it, I know people have like kind of almost a, a crystallized version of your art in their head. But if you really go back and look over, like even Madman from beginning to the last Madman you did, there's a huge progression. Uh, and so I feel like you, like you said, you are definitely growing issue to issue. But there's almost like a thematic search through all of your work. Like you are searching for the answer to something. Uh, where I guess what started this creative impulse is beyond. Was it, was it seeing all the stuff that you, as a kid, and wanting to be part of it? Or was there a larger drive to get into artistic expression? I'm not sure. That, that question just has my brain splitting off in so many <laughs> different directions at the same time. Um, I, my dad was a shrink. And he, I, I was always asking him, questions that no one has the answers to. And um, it's always, certain things upset me, have, have my entire life. Um, one of my earliest memories was um, a summer night and having to go to bed early, or it felt early for me, and just laying in bed and the ceiling kind of opened up and I imagined the stars and, and how what's the furthest star and then what's beyond the furthest star. And the next thing I knew I was terrified and started screaming. My mom had to come and calm me down. And I, I just started asking her like, where did everything begin and what happened before that? And and if if time ends, then what, what exists after that? And um, she had to just make me concentrate on, what are you doing tomorrow? Are you going to play with your friends? Or what are you going to do? Are you going to have fun? And so kind of telling me to, to um, experience or just con worry about what's happening right now and what makes me happy now. Dad later told me that I, it's called existential anxiety. 
and it, but for whatever reason, I'm, I'm always caught between wanting to have some kind of answer about why people are the way they are and wh how to, if, we, if every day can't be better than the one before, then what's the purpose of existence at all? So there's all of these deep things which are always messing with my brain. And then there's the other half where I get intense pleasure from the simplest things. And so one of my earliest memories is um, my, my brother, we were playing and I, he had me up on a card table and he was saying, dance, boy, dance, and he was shaking the table. And the next thing I knew, I woke up in the hospital. <laughs> But the, I remember waking up and the bed in the hospital was covered with comic books. And it was one of the happiest days of my life. I just, just to see everybody that I loved and who loved me, uh, you know, like at the end of Wizard of Oz, Dorothy wakes up and everybody <laughs> she loves, right? it was kind of like that, but buried in comic books. So then you kept jumping off tables after that. <laughs> That's right. Jumping off roofs. I'm constantly seeking attention so I can have free comic books. Because that makes sense because Mad Men basically opens with the question of who am I? Because Frank Einstein doesn't remember. And so his ongoing journey is trying to figure that out. And then, but then this going off on these adventures and having, like you say, the everyday moments that come in and make life worthwhile and his friends and is how much is Madman representative then of you as a person in your journey? I used to I used to think it was was a negative thing to admit that um, I put my that I drew from myself into this character. I wanted people to think that it was a completely original thing that came out of thin air. Everything that I came up with, but ultimately I found honesty was the best policy and, and now acknowledge that almost everything that Frank Einstein <laughs> says and does is from my own um, messed up head. So we could kind of map like, your emotional <laughs> Very, oh, progression. Yes, for sure. I can look at different um, stories and the things that he's concerned with were concerning me. And um, <laughs> which is really, I, I don't, I'm, almost want to reel that back into my mouth, but um, yeah, I, he, he is my sounding board. Frank Einstein is largely me. I, um, I've always been self-conscious of my appearance. Um, I, like I, I, to this day, I have no idea why Laura loves me or is attracted to me. We all wonder that. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> does. But so Frank Einstein, you know, he sees himself as ugly and and strives to be the best person he can be and and be worthy of the good things that that he has in his in his life. So that um, so that's definitely a part of me. Also, the uh, the philosophy and spiritual aspects of the book, being raised Mormon, um, being taught that we were spirits before we got bodies and came to earth that we had an existence prior but then we don't have any memory of that and so as a kid you can see how that might upset upset you like and it also um, reincarnation is something that makes no sense to me because if you have no memory of your previous existence you're dead anyway so th these thoughts just you know just churn around inside my head. So then so, you create a character who died and is brought back yeah. as something else. And he, he gets little pieces of his previous life back. And some of the things he doesn't like when he remembers them and, and he realizes that, well, that's who I was then. I can change that. I can improve upon that. Um, but the, Reincarnation is not attractive to me in any way as a philosophy if, unless we retain our experiences and memories from each existent, existence, from each life. There, otherwise, what's the point? So with some of the aspects of the faith I was raised in, um, that we're told that we will you know, get all of these memories and experiences and retain them, and, and that, but we have to be kind of thrown in naked into this life to kind of fend for ourselves and, and to uh, uh, depend on faith and that sort of thing. So, and, and I'm somebody that very much 
um, leans on tangible and scientific things. I, just because somebody tells me, trust me, believe me, have faith in this, I find it very difficult. So I have to look for proof. I have to look for things that, that this is why we do these things. This is the purpose. This is the reason for that. So part of, I guess, then reading Madman is he's always going off to examine things for Dr. Flynn. Is that, that's the impulse for that then is he's got, he's going to go find these answers. And yeah. Yeah, well, he, the, the, just like I, through most of my, all of my life, I would lean on my dad. He's the, the smartest, most experienced person I've ever known in my life. He, um, he lost his hand, and for whatever reason, he always told people different stories about how he lost his hand. And um, I think because of the loss of his hand, he was always trying to prove to himself that he could do anything he wanted to. So he became an expert at everything. He was an expert at scuba diving, gliding, you know, parachuting. Uh, er anything you could think of, he would do it until he was as good as he could be at that. And, um, and I like the mystery behind the, at his memorial, Everybody had a different story. A shark attack, propeller took his hand <laughs> off, all of these different things. What did he tell you? Um, I, because growing up, I always heard the different stories. I finally realized I didn't want to know what really happened. I liked, all, I liked that it could have been any number of these things. The, the story that seems to make the most sense is he was playing around with explosives and blew his hand <laughs> off. And so the most embarrassing story is probably the, the one that was really yeah. what happened. But because he was such a bright, smart person um, and had so many experiences, I leaned very heavily on him. And that's kind of the way Frank Einstein leans on Dr. Flem and, uh, and to some extent Dr. Buffard, who then went off on a whole other spiritual journey. But Flem takes Frank for granted, and sometimes I always felt like I was trying to um, impress my father or show him that, that I was doing okay, that, I was, that the choices I was making were the right choices. Like um, making a stab at a comic book career wasn't something he thought was a great idea. Right. But before he died, um, he told me how proud he was and, and excited he was at, at, at our success. So well, in the last Madman series, Madman Atomic Comics, there actually is that coming together of, of Flynn right. and, and Frank and him realizing. Like, and I kind of picked up on that for It Girl, too, where I wanted It Girl to now be in this new position and not trust Dr. Flynn all over again. Yeah. But then to give him elements of redemption at the same time. Yeah. Cause, which is a parental role, is messing up having to work your way back and going, look, I didn't do that on purpose. Right.